shut the front door. Fiddlesticks! Oh, sugar. What the heck? You son of a mother trucker! Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, this is how not to swear in English. Guys, this is such an important lesson to learn. Now, I know that you know all the English swear words anyway. I know that you know them. Don't pretend like you don't. They're the first words that we learn, aren't they? I mean, the, the swear words are the first words that we learn in any language. How do I know that? Because the first French words I learned were swear words. The first Spanish words I learned were swear words. The first Cantonese words I learned were swear words. And it is quite enjoyable to swear in another language. I, I, you know, I admit that. But in certain contexts, it's completely not okay. So at work, for example, really not appropriate to swear in English at work. Um, around children is another place where I think it's really not okay to swear. And to be honest, in a lot of situations, there's a lot of, unless I'm with people that I feel very comfortable with, uh, or I'm at football, <laughs> I don't, I really am very careful not to swear. So we need to be aware of, of our context about where we are and who we're with if we are going to swear. We as Eat Sleep Dreamers, we, I think we should be able to express ourselves without using swear words. We don't need to use them. There are so many other ways to express how we feel without using swear words. And actually, we're gonna get really creative today. We're gonna find some words that are actually way more fun to use than swear words. You can start to bring in uh, Shakespeare, Roald Dahl, film quotes. We're going to look at all of those today and we're going to find out ways, creative ways, to not swear. Alright, so if you're up for it, this is going to be a fun lesson, okay? Alright, let's start off with the classic one, this word. Now, a euphemism we use to describe this word is the F-bomb. The F-bomb. So, you could say, uh, I try not to use the F-bomb, and that means I try not to use that word, okay? So, already there's a nice word, a euphemism we can use to avoid saying that word. So, the F-bomb. Quite an informal phrase here is, oh, he dropped the F-bomb. He dropped the F-bomb. To drop the F-bomb is kind of like he said th that word, the, the F-word. That's another way we could describe it is the F word, okay? So it's the F word or the F bomb. Now an alternative you could use, I mean you could say uh, oh, for crying out loud, for crying out loud, it's quite a good one, oh, for crying out loud. You could say blast, oh blast, blast. Um, a slightly old fashioned one is fiddlesticks, fiddlesticks, bit old fashioned, yeah it's quite sweet so uh, you know you could use that one, oh fiddlesticks. And again, it starts with F, so it kind of helps you to, to express what you feel, but without saying the full F word, you say, oh, fiddlesticks. We also use the F word to, with up to suggest that we made a mistake. Oh, I, I F'd up. And in fact, to F up is quite a nice way to avoid using the F word. Oh, I F'd up. So I made a mistake. You could also say, I screwed up. That's quite good. Or I messed up. Oh. I totally messed up. Same thing. So you could avoid saying the F word quite nicely with I F'd up, I screwed up, I messed up. With the ING, it's used as an adverb as well to intensify our feelings about something. Um, so alternatives might be like, it's flipping. So, oh, it's flipping cold, isn't it? It's flipping cold. Or it's freaking cold. Or freaking cold. So you could say, oh, it's flipping cold, isn't it? Or oh, it's freaking cold. Uh, freaking maybe slightly more American, possibly. Oh, it's freaking cold, isn't it? So all three you could use as an intensifier to in intensify how you feel about something. Again, you could say, oh, that meal was flipping good. Whew. That meal was flipping good. So you're avoiding saying the F word, but you're intensifying how you feel about something. A nice alternative to uh, the F word with ING is bleep. Now, in films, um, when there is a swear word, certainly on TV, they might, they used to bleep out the word. It was a kind of, it's a sound. It's essentially this. What the? So that's to bleep out a word. So we use that as a word now. So for example, I might say, oh, I lost my bleeping phone. Oh, 
and that is expressing the F word with the ing, but we don't need to use it. We're being creative with the language. We're using the word bleep, which is associated with swear words and foul language, but we're using it in a creative sense. The other classic word is this one. We call these four letter words. Like if you said, oh, he uses too many four letter words. Four letter word kind of means either that one or the other one. So um, yeah, again, it's like a euphemism to talk about a swear word. So for this four letter word, alternatives, the classic one would be sugar. Ah, oh, sugar. Again, it has the S sound, so it feels like you're about to say it, but you avoid saying the word. So you say, ah, oh, sugar. You could say, ah, oh, shoot as well, shoot. So sugar, shoot. Uh, a really soft one, ah, oh, bother. Oh, bother. <laughs> Again, maybe slightly, uh, the old fashioned maybe. A sort of classically British one, um, slightly old fashioned again would be like, oh, Gordon Bennett. Gordon Bennett. Now, I don't know who Gordon Bennett is or was. I don't know why we say his name, but you'll hear it. It's, maybe it's a kind of uh, British thing. It's, maybe it's a London thing as well. Oh, Gordon Bennett. <laughs> Gordon Bennett. So you can use Gordon Bennett if you're surprised or you're annoyed. Yeah, maybe it's one that you might hear a native speaker say, but you don't necessarily need to use that one. In London, we'd probably use like blimey, oh, cool blimey, for example, um, to show like surprise or annoyance. Uh, blimey, crikey as well, oh crikey, crikey. Again, it's particularly with surprise or uh, some kind of exasperation, like oh god, crikey. Those London, very British ones, Gordon Bennett, blimey, crikey, good ways to show that you're annoyed about something. Not necessarily swear words as such, but if you want to show that you're annoyed, those are, those are pretty good. With this phrase, we could avoid saying this by actually using the phrase SOB. Oh, what an SOB. Now, we know from SOB that it means that phrase. So there is a connection. And so again, I would be careful with, with things that have any connection to a swear word about using that in, in, at work or, um, or with, around children or things like that. I'd be very careful. Um, but it's safer than saying the full phrase. So, oh, what an SOB. Um, alternative would be son of a gun. That's quite a classic one. Oh, son of a gun. Son of a mother trucker. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I've heard recently son of a bachelor as well. I guess you could be quite creative with this. You could go to son of a whatever you want. Uh, I also heard son of a motherless goat. Son of a motherless goat. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all right. It's. It's a nice alternative. <laughs> the thing is, again, I, I would be a bit careful about using that anywhere formal. I mean, it, it's quite obvious what it actually means. It's quite aggressive, so yeah. But it's an alternative. My favorite, instead of saying this phrase, you could say, shut the front door. <laughs> shut the front door. That was brilliant, I love that one. We understand what it means, but you avoid the rude words. So that's often used in surprise. Um, so if someone has said something surprising to you, you could say, shut the front door. Similar to SOB is BS. Now BS stands for that, You're kind of like nonsense, essentially. Oh, that's nonsense. And you can say, oh, that's BS. You're talking BS. <laughs> Means you're talking nonsense. Again, people understand what BS stands for, so use it wisely in the context that you're in. Instead of using this phrase, you could say, oh, what the heck? What the heck? So maybe somebody has done something stupid and you say, what the heck? What the heck? What the heck are you doing? Or you could say, what the F are you doing? Again, you're avoiding the full words, but there is obviously with F, there is association. So you are linking it to the, the full word. So the what the heck is probably a safer word to use here, but what the F, oh, what the F? Oh, what the F's he done now? <laughs> now there are hundreds of words to describe someone as an idiot. If you want to describe someone as an idiot, there is a variety of words. Some extraordinarily rude, but there are some alternatives, some creative alternatives that we can use. So yeah, like, oh, you're an idiot. That's a classic one. Oh, what an idiot. What a plonker. In British English, plonker is, <laughs> is quite a common one. Uh, it's quite a classic one. Um, oh, what a plonker. <laughs> Just means an idiot. Um, I've heard a lot more recently, like a douche. In, uh, in American English, it's come over here. Oh, what a douche. Um, so I would say that's probably not 
too rude. Uh, in English, you can say, oh, what a twit, a twit. That's quite a, quite a soft one, I would say, oh, yeah, what a twit. But you know what? I think if you're going to insult somebody, if you're going to use the, if you're going to call them an idiot, you should be creative with this word. This is your chance to shine, to show that you have humour as part of your language. Because I think that's, that's a huge part of language is being funny with it, being playful with it. So I'm going to look to two of Britain's greatest writers for inspiration. Let's start with Shakespeare. How would Shakespeare insult someone? Away, you three-inch fool! Thou art as fat as butter. You scallion! You rampallion! You fustalarian! I'll tickle your catastrophe. Roald Dahl invented so many words that we can use some of them and they're so fun and playful. We can use one of those to insult somebody. You fuzzy bump. You snozberry. You gobble funk. And how about films? Why don't we look to films and TV to find fantastic ways or creative ways to insult someone? Because if you are going to insult someone, do it in a fun, creative way. So uh, one of my favourite films is Elf, uh, played by... Played by... Will Ferrell. Played by Will Ferrell. Now Will Ferrell in Elf uses some amazing language. And one of my favourites is, you cotton-headed ninny muggins. <laughs> I mean, is that not the best insult you've ever heard without actually being rude? Ah, oh, that, if you do one thing this week, please use that phrase. <laughs> it's too funny. It's a really fun phrase. If somebody uses a lot of swear words in their language or in their vocabulary, we say they have a potty mouth, a potty mouth. So, so for example, uh, you might say, oh, my brother has a real potty mouth. <laughs> and that tells me that he says a lot of swear words. You could also say a foul mouth, to have a foul mouth. Oh, he has a foul mouth. He, has, he says a lot of rude words. Now, I don't know about uh, where you guys are, but I remember in the previous place that I used to work, we had a swear jar. This was a jar and Every time that somebody swore in the office, you'd have to put a pound into the swear jar. And it was a really good way of stopping people from swearing because as soon as you did it, you'd be like, oh no, oh what did I do? Okay, a pound in the swear jar. And you know, if you had a potty mouth or a foul mouth, you'd lose a lot of money in the week. So this is a really good way to, to stop people from swearing and to, Get them to use more creative ways to express themselves. I suggest you try that. If you work in an office where there's too much swearing, I suggest you introduce a swear jar. If you want to avoid swearing in your writing, then we can use all the different symbols that are used in punctuation to replace key letters in the word. So I've been using it throughout this video and we'll look at some other examples of how you can avoid actually writing the, the swear word itself, but you can suggest what it is. Obviously this is extremely informal and I wouldn't be using this in any kind of serious writing, but I wouldn't be swearing in any serious writing in a, in a, in a business document or whatever, clearly. So this is again, when you're talking to, uh, to your friends or whatever, but you don't want to swear, this is a nice alternative. <laughs> Easily dreamers, how was that? Did you enjoy that lesson? How not to swear in English? If you enjoyed it, please give it a big like, big thumbs up. And if you know anyone who would enjoy that video, then please share it with them. Share it with someone that's learning English or your English class or your English teacher. Please share this video with them. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Remember guys, I've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday teaching you fresh modern British English so that you can take your English to the next level. That's why I'm here, okay? Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, until next time, this is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying, shut the front door. Thou art as fat as butter. Thou art as fat as butter. Thou art as fat as butter. Away, you three-inch fool. Away, you three-inch fool. Away, you three-inch fool.
away, you three-inch fool.